morning, Morning Star family and friends. God bless you. God keep you. Uh, we pray that you are having a wonderful start to your week today and that the remainder of the week will be blessed and you will be highly favored. Uh, again, we pray that last week was a wonderful week and God did something really special in your life. Uh, I did go ahead and put in the chat that uh, we will be doing a part two to last Sunday's message. So if you want to go ahead and pull up Romans chapter 12, you may do so at this time. Romans chapter 12, we're going to start a few verses uh, uh, subsequent to the verses that we did on last Sunday as a part two. We had a little bit more we want to dive into into that 12th chapter of Romans. So we're going to touch on that uh, again on today. Uh, we'll also be celebrating communion at the end of the message uh, this morning. Uh, and so we are excited and looking forward to that as well. Uh, before we go any further, we're going to allow our officers to come and give us a devotion. Uh, and then we will move forward with a couple of announcements. And then we will be ready to rock and roll. Brother Deacons, are you ready? Yes, we're ready. We can hear you uh, loud and clear. Come from Psalm 101. I will sing, O merciful and dear man unto thee, O Lord, I will sing. I will behave myself wildly in a perfect way. Or when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house within, with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate your work of them to turn aside. It shall not plead to me. A full heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whosoever private shineth his neighbor him, I will cut off. That has a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh the secret shall not dwell within my house. He that tell the lie shall not tell it in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I read the Psalm 101, the video, may the Lord have a test the reason. May he even do it on his total word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. we come once again to give you praise. We look to the hill which comes out here. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I get to come for you. Yes, you yes, created yes. and sustain us, Father. All you require that we just give you praise and live right and treat one another right. Yes, and we Lord. thank you all for taking care of us and blessing us all through this year. Mm -hmm. and thank you for you what we sell, we spent time with our family to spend the family bond. Yes, and sure. Father, thank you for for being in son, being in church one more time. Father. Yes, yes, yes. Father, yes. oh, we thank you for our pastor who's been leading and guiding us all over the year, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But Father, you continue to bless and guide and lead this morning. Yes, Father. Well, we can share them wherever they may be throughout yes. our community. Yes. Father, you just heal and touch their body. Yes. Father, them wherever they may be from mm -hmm. because people are still leaving from this world. Just just touch and spend over family, Father. Yes, yes, right now, God. I'm praying for our young people. Yes. And Father, that you would just continue to put your love and armor around, protect them and keep them safe while they're in school, Father. Yes. Protect them yes. while they're in the street, so they're leaving here at an early age, Father. Yes, so Father. If they would learn that if they could just learn to Care a Bible over carrying guns and violence yes, and the seal. Yes, yes. yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We just need to pray and glory, Father. Let your oh, word go to our house this morning. Touch each and every one of us, Father. Yes, yes. So we all need you. We need you, Father. In, in our homes, we need you in the streets. We need you in the church as well. Amen. We need you across this world. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, brothers, uh, for Amen. that very powerful prayer and very powerful devotion and scripture, relevant words, relevant prayers, and we thank God for you. Uh, we're going to pause for a moment to allow uh, those who are on the call this morning to unmute at this time, and 
Uh, go ahead and greet your brothers and your sisters. Uh, you may unmute at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, well, listen, again, we are excited and glad to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. We thank God for uh, how he's kept us over this last almost two years of dealing with this uh, global pandemic. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being diligent and vigilant, uh, vigilant throughout the pandemic. I want to encourage you. I know it can get uh, kind of uh, boring and it can get taxing uh, to continue to be safe. But I do encourage you to remember to uh, continue to wear those face masks, especially on the inside um, and continue being safe. It's a good habit to wash those hands and lather them for 20 seconds. I believe that's a good habit that's going to do well for us even after the pandemic. So let's make sure that we're doing that. Even when we get back in our cars from leaving Walmart and the grocery store, mm -hmm. go ahead and sanitize those hands because mm -hmm. you've touched the buggy. You've touched different products in the aisle, uh, and we wouldn't want you to uh, rub your nose and, and possibly contract the coronavirus. So let's not let our guards down now. We fought so hard yeah. uh, this last almost two years, so let's continue to fight and continue to take care of one another. Mm -hmm. As always, I want to thank those who are on the front line. Uh, our healthcare personnel, we have a few in our congregation. Thank you so much for the work that you've done. Uh, we thank God for the, uh, uh, the the 911 operators. We thank God for uh, the EMT uh, uh, ambulance uh, folks. We thank God for all of those retail workers, Walmart and all of the other places who have stood in and served us over this last couple of years. We thank God for all of you, teachers, educators, social workers. Uh, we praise God and thank God for all of them. We want to continue to lift up our students, as Deacon McGee alluded to, uh, as they are in the classrooms and still uh, around people who possibly could have the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we continue to pray for them as well. That's right. Today we're going to... Uh, uh, do a part two of our message from on last Sunday. So if you just got on and want to go ahead and scroll over to Romans, the 12th chapter, you may do so at this time. Uh, we're also going to have an altar prayer here shortly from Deacon Smith. Uh, we want to remember all of those names uh, that we've mentioned in the last uh, month or two. Uh, Hattie Mae Griffith, who passed away, Jesse's mom, uh, we want to lift that family up in their time of bereavement. Uh, we want to lift up uh, Deacon Wayne McGee and Sister Gerthania McGee and family as uh, Wayne lost his last aunt, Sarah Quick. Uh, continue to lift that family up. Mm -hmm. Continue to lift all the families up who've lost loved ones uh, over the last couple of years. Let's pray for them as well. Uh, let's lift up our children in school, our educators. Let's lift up Lynn Shell Walker is a name that I remember. Let's lift up Siobhan Pampley uh, as a name I remember. The Patheas, let's lift them up. Uh, let's lift all of us up that God may do something special in our lives, in our time of need. Uh, and we know that God is just that kind of God. Let's lift up uh, Mother Catchins and Felicia and that family as we lost uh, one of our deacons, Deacon Catchins. Let's lift all of these communities up uh, that God will just continue to strengthen us. Having said that, uh, we're going to ask Deacon Smith to come in and offer us a prayer before our message. Uh, and then we'll have our message and then move on to communion and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Deacon Smith, are you there, brother? Deacon Smith, are you there? Okay, I saw him there a little bit early. He may be having some um, 
technical difficulties. That will be just fine. We'll let him chime in a little bit later with us. So let's go ahead and pull the word up. Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. And we looked at this uh, particular passage on last Sunday. Uh, on last Sunday, we looked at Romans, the 12th chapter, but we began at that very first verse. Uh, today, we're going to uh, skip down to verse number nine. We looked at Romans, the 12th chapter, verses one through five on last Sunday, if you were with us. And we talked about uh, how we're all in this thing together. Mm -hmm. And just as a quick recap uh, on last Sunday, just as a quick recap on last Sunday, uh, there were a few points of emphasis that we extracted from what Paul was sharing with us uh, and things that we can make sure that we do to make sure that we are all in this together uh, in this uh, thing that we call ministry work. Uh, one of the first things that we talked about was positioning our presentation and making sure that uh, we are positioned properly and that we are presenting ourselves as good believers should do. That was one of the first things that we talked about on last Sunday. Uh, secondly, we talked about making over our mind and having a renewed mind and a renewed mindset when it comes to being in this together and working the ministry. Thirdly, we talked about being humble and hastening towards humility uh, as one of the components that we would need to make sure that we accomplished in order to move the ministry forward, to build the kingdom. And the last thing that we talked about, which was around verse number five, uh, we talked about uh, being uh, diving into uh, our divine diversity. In other words, realizing that we all have different gifts, but all of those gifts are working toward the ministry and working towards the good. And that's kind of what we talked about in the first four or five verses of Romans, the 12th chapter on last Sunday. Well, this Sunday, we're going to pick that up at verse number nine through 13, as the Apostle Paul is still dealing with this church in Rome and dealing with them working together mm -hmm. in order to build the kingdom of God. All right. So go with me for a few moments to Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 13. Okay. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Okay. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, mm -hmm. continuing instant in prayer. And then the final verse, verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. All right. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and especially the doing of his holy and divine word from this passage of scriptures and certainly alluding to those passages from last Sunday verses one through five. We want to continue the thought from last week. And that thought is we're all in this together. Yeah. We are all in this together. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, uh, you might recall us uh, speaking about how God is requiring us to be a significant part of building the body of Christ. All right. Uh, but it is the enemy's job to confuse us, to confine us, uh, and to make our contemporary beliefs as to only taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
But I want to remind you, my brothers and my sisters, that no matter what the enemy throws our way, mm -hmm. we must remember, as we stated on last Sunday, that when it comes to kingdom building, we are all in this thing together. Mm -hmm. You must understand uh, you've heard the saying before that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I need to explain to you and remind you that it takes a village in order to continue to build the kingdom of God. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, remember that the enemy has a job and he does his job. Well, his job is to kill you, steal from you and destroy you. Not only does he want to do that physically, but the enemy wants to take you out spiritually, mentally, socially, financially, economically, and any other Lee that he can think about. All right. All right. But in order for us to combat the enemy, in order for us to build the kingdom the way that God wants us to, we must remember, Morningstar and friends, that we are all in this together. together. That's right. Uh, listen, that, 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 that there are no eyes in the word team. Uh -huh. We must understand that everybody has their function. And as we look at the preceding verses, uh, Paul reminds us that everybody has varying gifts, but all of them are a vital part of building the kingdom of God. All right. Let me translate that for you real quick. That means that your job is not any more important than anybody else's job. All right. But what is important is that you are doing that job, and not only are you doing it, but you are doing it to edify the body of Christ. Amen. Let me Amen. break it down Amen. a little bit more. It's our responsibility to make sure that in all things that God gets the glory yes. out of our service unto him. Amen. The bottom line is this morning star. We are all in this thing together. Yes. Don't be fooled. Don't be dismayed. Mm -hmm. You cannot work this ministry all by yourself. That's right. Once we begin to call it I, once we begin to make it about me, mm -hmm. Once we begin to go out on a tangent and get outside of what God has ordained for us to do, then things begin to go awry. Yes. I heard Deacon McGee yes. talk about the family and, and bringing the family together. Yeah, that, that's what we must do. We must yes. bind the family close together, as grandmama used to say, that one can't fall for the other. Yes. Stronger families mean stronger communities. Mm -hmm. Stronger communities mean stronger churches. Stronger churches mean stronger voices. Yes. Stronger yes. voices mean we begin to change the things that are around us uh, and make stronger yes. believers. Yes. Because I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, uh, but out of all the hell that we go on in earth, yes. we go through on Amen. earth, I want to go to heaven when it's time to go to the other side. Amen. But you must remember that we are all in this together. Romans had issues. There were different cultural backgrounds in the church at Rome. Mm -hmm. Stay with me for a second. I'm going to remind you of the background we gave you last week. Think about it. There were Jews in the church. Mm -hmm. And there were also Gentiles, which basically was anybody outside of that Jewish descent. All right. Understand that the Jews felt that they had a right to do exactly what they wanted to do because Jesus Christ himself was of their lineage. Uh -huh. Well, the Gentiles came from the perspective that Jesus Christ, who has died and gone to heaven, said that all who want to come can come. Uh -huh. So there were conflicting opinions. The Jews looked at the Gentiles because they didn't celebrate the Jewish traditions like the Jews did. Uh -huh. So there was all type of calamity and chaos in the church. And the apostle Paul wrote to bring them all back together again. 
-hmm. He wanted them to understand that whether you're from this side of the track or this side of the track, the common denominator is believing that Jesus Christ That's came. Right. That's right. He witnessed. Mm -hmm. He went to the cross. He died. He went to the grave, but he rose with all power in his hand. Mm -hmm. If the folks on this side of the track believe that, and the folks on this side of the track believe that, then we can get somewhere together. All right. That is the common denominator, Jesus Christ and the word in which he left for us to go by. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, look in the word of God. It'll tell you about marriage. It'll tell you how to love. It'll tell you how to give. It will tell you how to minister. It will tell you how to form your church. Mm -hmm. It will tell you how to pray. It will tell you how to minister. It will tell you how to rejoice. Yes. It's the common bond that links us all together. Mm -hmm. I want to share with you four things in the text today as a continuation of last week. Mm -hmm. What must I do to make sure that we're all in this together, Morning Star? Number one, number one, we've got to love until we like it. All right. I need to say that again. We've got to love until we like it. All right, man. Look at verse 9 and 10. Let love be without dissimulation. Mm -hmm. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Watch this. Because we have a problem with this. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. Pastor Bro said, love until you like it. Mm. Why do you say that, Pastor Bro? Because sometimes we operate with the notion mm. that I can love this joker, but I don't have to All like right. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory mm -hmm. be to God. Yeah. You said, you know, yeah. that's how we do it as black Baptists. Yeah. I, I can love you. But that doesn't mean I have to like you. <laughs> well, although that is true, Morningstar, and Black Baptist in YouTube land, the <laughs> fact of the matter is, in order to get kingdom building done, you kind of need to like the person that you're working with. All right now. Yeah, I know work can get done in, in, in secular environments. I know that work can get done in the workplace. I know that work can get done outside of kingdom building. Uh, but when it comes to kingdom building, yes. Yes. you need to love on that person. Yes. Love on that situation until you begin to like it. Uh -huh. Because we can't quite go as far as we want to go. If we are operating and standing beside people shoulder to shoulder that we can't stand. Mm -hmm. If I was in church, I'd say you ought to say that's amen right, right there. Right. Yeah, be, be honest with yourself. We, we've we said it before. I, I, I can love you. Doesn't mean I have to like you. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. But in order to build the kingdom the way that God wants us to build the kingdom, you need to like that person that you love. That's right, that's right. Amen, somebody. That's right. Can you imagine trying to devise a plan to feed the hungry, mm. but you're working beside somebody you don't like? That's right. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. The person receiving the food feels that in their spirit. That's right. So they're not receiving it with a spirit of love. Can you imagine trying to build the community through educational training programs, through parenting classes, through feeding those who are hungry, clothing those who are naked, but the person that you're working side by side, yeah. you can't stand their yeah. goods. But baby, I want to remind you this morning that you need to love them until you begin to like them. That's right. First Peter 4 and 8 says it like this. Peter said, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over mm. 
a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Yes, even their faults will be covered in love. Even your faults can be covered with love. Mm -hmm. Even my faults can be covered with love. Number one thing that we've got to do is a continuation of last week. We've got to love until we like it, Morningstar. Yes. Secondly, not only must we love until we like it, the second thing we must do, we've got to serve away our slothfulness. Mm. Serve away Come on now. our slothfulness. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it up. Look at verse 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Something happened over the years. We do not serve the Lord the way that we used to. Something has transpired, and I believe it may be a trick of the enemy, but we have gotten too good for our shoes. We don't serve the Lord like we used That's to. Right. And I That's need right. to tell you something right now. That's I'm not right. just talking about showing up on Sunday morning at 1030, mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock. That's right. That, that, that's not the only element to serving the Lord. That's a trick from the enemy. If you think that if you show up at 10 o'clock, show up at Bible study, that that's considered serving the Lord. Uh -huh. But serving the Lord means also serving your brothers and your sisters. Uh -huh. But we've lost that over the years. For whatever reason, the enemy has tricked us into believing that showing up at church is enough. That's right. But no, 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 no. God called us to serve the community. God called us to serve each other. God called us to feed the hungry. God called us to clothe the naked. And the only way that we're going to move that slothful spirit out of the way is to serve away that slothfulness. That's right. Listen, Paul. That's right. Paul said it like this or wrote it like this in Ephesians 2 and 10. Listen very carefully to this. Paul wrote, for we are his workmanship. Mm-hmm. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Folks, we must understand that church ministry is not just about showing up at church. Mm -hmm. But it's about being a part of right. the ministry Amen. of the church. Amen. You need to Amen. be able to ask yourself. What is it that I do in my church ministry to move forward? What do I do in the confine of the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. What is my ministry area? What do I do in terms of outreach in yes. my church? And if you're asking yourself, well, I ask myself this, but I don't know what outreach we do in the church. Well, you need to talk to your deacons and your pastor. Mm -hmm. Because we need to be outreaching. We need to be impacting the community. Mm -hmm. We need to be imparting our values uh, on the community children. We need to be doing our part within the body of Christ. But in order to do yes. so, we've got to serve away slothfulness. Hmm. Number one. Love that joker until you like him. Hmm. Number two, serve away our slothfulness. Yeah, we, we're lazy. We've become lazy over the last 20, 25 years. We've become lazy. Let's serve that away. Number three, prepare your prayer for a praise party. Hmm. Number three, prepare your prayer. All right. For a praise party. I didn't make it up. Look at verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. In other words. Paul is letting them know that. We must always pray. 
But within that prayer, within that patience, you need to go ahead and rejoice because of All what right. God is going to do for All you. Right. Does that make sense this yes, morning? Yes, yes, yes. Your prayer life is supposed to make you feel better. All right. <laughs> Not worse. If it's making you feel worse, then perhaps you're not fervent or connecting in prayer. Because I don't know about you. Once I give it to the Lord, hmm. then I can go ahead and start shouting. All right. Amen. And you're not shouting because you're simply anticipating what God can do. Yes. You're shouting because you know he's done it before. All right. Amen, somebody. In fact, he yes. woke you up this morning. He yes. didn't have to do it. And that's enough right there to praise the yes. Lord. We've got to prepare our prayers for a praise party. Yes. In other words, yes. God, I love you. Yes. I reverence you. I need you. I know you're going to be there for me. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and celebrate Shut in right advance. Now. Because I know that if I didn't get the promotion right now, you Amen. got something much Amen. better for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and shout yes. right now. Yes. Folks, we got to prepare ourselves for a praise party. Mm. And we can do that through our prayer. Paul wrote it like this in Romans 4 and 20. He was talking about Abraham. He said, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Mm -hmm. But he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Mm -hmm. It's something about our prayer life that should give us strength. Yes. It's something about talking to the king of kings and his spirit comforting us, letting us know it's going to be all right. That should give us strength. And let me remind you on this call. No problems too big or too small for God. He can fix family problems, mm. church problems, work problems. Mm. Big problems, little problems, mm, mm, mm. but you have to prepare yourself in prayer to go ahead and throw a praise party. All right. Not only are you talking to him about what you need or want, you're celebrating him yes. for what he's already done yes. and for what he's doing right, right. now. And for what he's about to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, when the pandemic started in March 2020, not only should you have been praying for a remedy mm. and praying for God to intervene, you should have went ahead and celebrated. All right. Because you knew that November 2021 was coming mm. and God was going to show up. Yes. God was going to provide. A vaccine. God was going to provide yes. face masks. God was going to provide all those yes, things to yes, help yes. mitigate a global pandemic. I hope that you didn't wait and celebrate right now. Because we should have been celebrating coming. a year ago. It was coming. Because that's just the kind of God that we serve. Number one. We've got to love until we like it. Think about it. You're working side by side with these folks in the ministry. The people who you're serving don't need to know that you like this person, mm. that you don't like this person. You need to love them until you like right. them. Number two, you got to serve away that slothfulness. Perhaps you've been a little lazy in ministry. Mm. Perhaps you've been a pew member. Perhaps You've only just shown up because you don't want to be a part of the mess that might be taking place. Mm. Whatever it is, serving can move all that slothfulness out of the way. Number three, you got to prepare your prayer life for a praise party. And the last thing that we need to do to make sure that we're all in this together, we've got to hop 
from hoarding mm. to hospitality. All right. Let me say that again. We've got to hop from hoarding hospitality. to hospitality. Mm. I didn't make it up. Paul had these same issues 2,000 years ago. Look at Come verse 13. Mm -hmm. Distributing yes. to the necessity of saints. All right. Giving to hospitality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Folks, look at me very carefully. We have a distribution problem. Mm. We don't like to. When I say we, I'm talking about believers. I'm not pointing out Morningstar or any other churches specifically on this call. But we have a distribution problem. Yes. Yes. We don't like to give. That's right. If I was at church, I'd say amen, somebody. That's right. We don't like to distribute. We don't like to outreach mm -hmm. with our resources. As church folks, we have a tendency to hoard. Yes. I need to say that again. We have a tendency mm -hmm. to hoard. We oftentimes forget that we're not in the business to gain a profit. Amen. 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 We, we are we are a non-profit ministry. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we have to begin to hop from hoarding mm -hmm. to hospitality. Now, hospitality. Let, let me dig a little deeper real quick. Yes. Let me dig a little deeper. Yes. Hoarding got embedded in black folks hundreds of years ago. All right. For, for a pretty good reason. We were brought here as slaves. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. We moved up from just outright beat all day, everyday slaves to maybe sharecroppers. All right. We were still kind of slaves, mm -hmm. but we were working the master's land and he was allowing us to live there. So we moved from there and we got our quasi freedom, even though we weren't really free. Mm -hmm. So then we had to move towards the civil rights. And we still were looked upon as those same slaves that were brought over here. That's right. So we had embedded us uh, an inclination to keep what you got. To keep and hold on to what we got. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's rooted back from the slavery days because we didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. So once we begin to get things, mm -hmm. once we begin to, to find our footing and find our way, our mentality of holding on to everything yes. remained in place. Mm -hmm. And so Teach. those families that's inside of them to hold on to everything, they become a part of church families. Teach. Are y'all with me right now? Yes. So now the church family, is made up of families who deep down inside, back from the slavery days forward, have an inclination and a propensity to hold on to and hoard everything. Teach Brewer. But there's one problem with that morning star and family and friends. That's contrary to what God teaches us. Yes. yes. You see, God has liberated us. Mm-hmm. But we have to be willing to ask God to, to move us to that next yes. level yes. that our minds can be renewed and yes. we will no longer think as slaves think. Yes. Now, don't go tell anybody that Pastor Brewer said we ain't got it rough no more. I'm not going I'm not saying that. Yeah, that that even when we get to equality, amen. It still won't be equity. Mm -hmm. I need to say that again. Even if the if we ever get to equality as black folks, it still won't be equity because we're so far behind. Yes. So there's no way they can give us 
what they're giving each other and expect that to be okay That's because right. we are so far behind on the scale. So I understand. I understand the propensity to hoard and to hold on. But the problem is that's contrary to what God wants God. us to do. Amen. God wants us to move from hoarding to, to hospitality. Gotta help each other. And if we do that, Amen. <laughs> Paul said, God will supply all of our, all needs, of our needs. Amen. According to his riches and his glory. Yes. Listen. When Jesus was was ministering to the disciples, hmm. he was sharing with them how to reach out to folks. And he gave them an example in Matthew 25, 42 through 46. I'm going to read it to you. Jesus said, for I was hungry hmm. and you gave me nothing to eat. That's what he says. This is our community talking to us. I was thirsty. And you gave me nothing to drink. Yes. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. Mm -hmm. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after mm -hmm. me. And so the disciples answered, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? The disciples were baffled. Yes. That Jesus would say such a yes. thing. And this was Jesus' reply. He said, truly I tell you, yes. whatever you did not do for one of the least of them, you did not do for me. What Jesus was simply teaching the disciples is that we have to minister to the least of them. Because you may be entertaining an angel and not even know it. That's right. And even outside of entertaining an angel, that's just the right thing to do. <laughs> our purpose, our purpose is to minister to the lost, to feed the hungry, to help build the community. And by chance of those folks seeing the God in us and what we do, I didn't say just feed folks who believe what you believe, but by chance folks seeing us doing that, they may ask the question and come to the church or come ask you outside of the church at the grocery store, what must I do to be Amen. saved? Folks, we've got to shed the hoarding mentality. Mm. I understand it from slavery days, from civil rights. I, I understand it. But at the same time, it's contrary to what God wants us to do. We're all in this together. We've got to love folks until we like them. We've got to serve away that slothfulness. When you're feeling like you're not a part of church and part of kingdom building, come ask, what can I do? What can I do to help in any area? We got to prepare our prayer for a praise party. And we got to hop from hoarding to hospitality. God bless you and God keep you. If you're on the call today and you've not made a declaration in your life that you're going to walk with Jesus Christ, I invite you to do so right now. You may be on the call today and you haven't uh, really been a part of what God wants you to be a part of. I'll pray with you. If you want to call me this week, call me tonight, call me next week. I'll pray with you that God will begin to open your eyes and reshape your mind. If you're on this call today and your mindset is that churches, ministry should accumulate wealth and accumulate profit and do all of those things without helping the community. And you need me to pray with you so we can get your mind renewed. We can pray that prayer. You got to think about it. Some of us have had that mindset for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go away overnight. The first step is asking God to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to have that prayer, I will pray with you. I will pray with you. But I know Morningstar, because God shared it with me, I know that God has plans for us, ministry plans. He wants us to be a church who outreaches, who impacts and affects the community that he has strategically placed us in. He wants us to get kids through school. He wants us to help single moms. He, he wants us to get folks registered to vote. He wants us to feed folks. He wants us to do all type of things. But until we understand that we're all in this together, it's a moot point. God bless you and God keep you. As we prepare for communion, we want you to go ahead and get your communion together. We're going to start out by reading um, reading our covenant. If you want to go ahead and get your communion together, we're going to read our covenant and then we will be ready to rock and roll. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to stir up, exhort each other into every good word and work to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report to seek to live to the glory of God who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. As we reflect back on the origin of the Passover, the Last Supper, and what we deem as communion, we think about how Moses was an unlikely candidate to go and speak up for God's people on God's behalf. If you recall, Moses himself was a Hebrew child who was uh, raised in Pharaoh's home. His mother sent him there as a means of saving him. So he grew up in all the culture and characteristics of the Egyptians. But there was one day that God called him out, 
so that he may one day return and deliver a message to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And the message was simply this. God said to let my people go. <laughs> they were enslaved. They were in Egypt. They were being brutalized, tortured, and in some cases, even murdered. They weren't fed properly. They weren't hydrated properly. And God would eventually hear their cry. And he sent Moses to tell them, let my people go. Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he was the, the king of the land. He had everything. He had wives. He had wealth. He had riches. So there was no reason for him to let God's people go. Moses returned and he shared with Pharaoh that plagues are going to come in this land. So it would be wise to let God's people go. Pharaoh did not. Plagues came left and right, 10 of them through the hand of God. Pharaoh even tried to explain them away as cheap parlor trip tricks or magician tricks, would even have his magicians and astrologers trying some of the tricks. But there was the last plague, the death of the firstborn child and cattle. Moses would communicate a message to those in the land, especially the Hebrews, that listen, on tonight, you need to get the blood of an innocent lamb and spread that over your lentil post. Because death is going to come through tonight. Unless you have the blood of that innocent lamb, then death will not pass over your door. The Hebrew, the Israelites, they did just that. They got innocent lambs. They put blood over their lentil posts. Obviously, the Egyptians did not do that. They did not believe in the Lord God. There was a loud cry in Egypt that night. As death came through that region, the firstborn children and animals were slaughtered. God showed up and showed out on that night. And see, we have the opportunity to have that innocent blood over the doorpost of our spirit. When we gave our lives to Christ, that gave us the blood of the innocent lamb covering us. So death could pass us over. As we fast forward, as Paul was, uh, ministering and writing to the church at Corinth, he told them about the serious nature of the table. He said that many have died, many have become sick and weak by not properly discerning this table. In other words, uh, by having bad things in their spirit. As we reflect back at the Last Supper, the disciples really didn't quite understand who Jesus really was. Many of them thought he was just a good preacher, good leader, good rabbi. They didn't quite grasp the concept that he was the king of kings and Lord of lords. So he broke bread with them, shared wine with them, and he let them know that this is the blood of the New Testament. Without the shedding of this blood, there can be no remission of sin. And so we share that with you today. If there is anything in your heart or your spirit that would prohibit you from partaking in this communion, we ask that you ask God to remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Let us bow. Our God and our Father, here we are, God, again, a few of your humble servants. We're so grateful and thank you, thankful, God, for your amazing grace and your sufficient mercy. We come, God, asking that you would forgive us for our sins. And also, God, that you would forgive those who have sinned against us. Give us your spirit uh, to look past our enemy's fault and love them, God, without dissimulation. And now, God, as we prepare to partake in this communion, we ask right now, God, that you would bless the body and bless the blood. For we know without it, there can be no remission of sins. If there is anything, oh God, that would hinder us from partaking in it, God, we ask that you would remove it right now in the name of Jesus. 
that we may share in this celebration of what you did for us, not only on Calvary, but what you did for us bringing our people out of Egypt. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 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 You may go ahead and distribute your communion cups at this time. Let us eat together. Thank you, Father. Let us drink together. Thank you, Father. The Word of God teaches us that after they had eaten at the Last Supper, that they went out into the Mount of Olives, sang Zion songs, quite, didn't quite understand everything that was going on, but they were happy that God was in their midst. We love you and we bless you and we thank God for all of you. We pray that you have a wonderful week this week and that you had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, Deacon Smith, are you there, brother? All right, we're gonna allow we're gonna allow you to give us closing prayer, and uh, then I'll come back with benediction, and then we'll let everybody unmute and say hello, and we may have a treat for you if the baby is awake. We're gonna let you see her live instead of just seeing a picture of her. Amen. So, uh, Deacon Smith, if you would close us in prayer, sir. Thanking you, Father, for everything you've done. Thank you for everything you're going to do. Thank you, Father, for being a God that sit high, but you look slow. Yes. Thank you, Father God, for keeping us all in the hollow of your hand. And thank you, Father, for Jesus dying on the cross at Calvary so that we all may have a right to the tree of life. Father God, we thank you even more for raising Jesus up that Thursday morning with all power in the palm of his hand. Yes, Lord. Father God, we need you this morning. We just can't get along without you. Father, we want to thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We ask, Father God, that you would continue to keep your loving arms wrapped around us yes, as we continue to run this race to see what the end is going to be. Yes, God. Father God, we come thanking you for last night's rest. We thank you for touching us with a finger of love this morning. Yes, thank you for the activity of our lambs. We thank you for food, shelter, and rain. Father God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift because they all come from above. Yes, Lord. Father God, we want to thank you this morning for things being as well as they are. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. Father God, we thank you for your precious holy word. 
and thank you for the messenger. Father God, we pray your continued blessing upon our pastor as well as his family. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, we pray that you will bless morning star yes, to Lord. not only just love one another, but to like one another as well. Yes, we pray, Father God, that your that morning star will be like that light that sitting up on a hill yes, for all the world to see. We pray that your light will so shine in us that everywhere we go, men, boys, and girls everywhere may see your good works yeah, God. and glorify you, Father God, which are in heaven. Yes, Father God. God, we need you this morning. We yeah. just can't get along without you. And Father, we want to pray for every church door open in your holy name all over this land. Yes, God. Father God, we come now praying for those that are sick and shut in all over this land. Yes, we ask, Father God, that you would touch those in the hospital. Touch those in the nursing home. Father, we realize that some have been dropped off and left alone. Yeah, we Lord. pray, Father God, that you will be talking in front of them this morning. Just keep your loving arms wrapped around them. Father, just heal all over this land if it be thy will. Touch God. Father, we know that there is a new virus that's coming out. Yes, so, Father, we ask that you would continue to keep your loving arms of protection wrapped around them. Yes, God. Father, we pray for the bereaved families all over this land. Hallelujah. We ask that you would lift up their bow down heads and wipe away their weeping tears. Yes, Lord. Let them know, Father, that weeping endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. That's right. Father God, just bless them as only you can. Yes, Lord. And Father God, we pray now that you will continue to bless our young people, continue to keep your loving arms wrapped around them. Touch God. And Father God, we pray that the violence will stop all yes, over this mm -hmm. land. Yes, We Lord. ask this yes, in the name yes, of Jesus. Yes. We realize that Satan is stealing, killing, and destroying. Yes, he but is. But Father, we know that what you have in your hand, the devil in hell can't look it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Father God, we pray for those in the jailhouses this morning, as well as those behind the prison walls. Yes, we God. pray for our leaders of this nation. We pray that they all would look to you, but that you is where all our help comes from. Yes, God. And Father God, we just want to say thank you this thank morning you, for being so good to us. Father God, we love you, we need you, and we just can't make it without you. Yes, God. Bless sense. Father God, we pray your blessings upon the rest of this day. Yeah. We pray your blessings upon our week that's coming up. Thank you, God. And Father God, we pray your blessings upon the, the mother as well as the grandparents. Yes, Bless Lord. them in a mighty special Amen. way. In Thank Jesus you. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest room and abide in us henceforth and forevermore. Let us all agree by saying amen. 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 All right. So we're going to allow you to unmute yourselves and say hello. And um, we'll see if we can get the baby in here so you can see the baby. Hello. 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 Good words. Thank you. Oh, Pastor Bill. Hey, love. How you doing? How you doing? All right. <laughs> you guys. Have a blessed week, everybody. All right. Here comes the baby. Here comes the baby now. Everybody have a blessed week. I love your family. I love you all. Amen. Hey, Pop. Oh. Here she is. I, I, I couldn't get her woke, but here she is. <laughs> She's beautiful. Right? She looks and like her. Like she looks like her papa. Of course she is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations, Arnison. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's beautiful. That's Samaya. That is Samaya. Samaya is on Samaya every Sunday. Samaya is on every Sunday. Samaya is on every Sunday. Hey, Samaya. Thank you, Sister Tisha. Somebody, oh. she's still there. Hi, somebody. Y'all have a blessed day. She's beautiful, Odyssey. Thank you. Yeah. Looks just like my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the color fool you. Hey, Tawana, I think I heard. I see Maxine and Tawana. I think I heard our Jane. Uh, oh, and Pat. Happy, 
the baby, the baby's ears are kind of dark brown, so it looks like she might be headed toward pawpaw color. <laughs> but she's still beautiful like her grandma. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> what did Samaya say? God. Come back here. Y'all have a blessed day. <laughs> All right, bless y'all. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Girl, you sleep. Mm -hmm. She was snoring, man. Oh, she's snoring. Yeah, she snores. Jesus. Hey, Lexi. Lexi, hey. Pat my bug. That's not that's not a lex. That's a lex. That's a lex. is elective. Her last name is elective. Her middle name is Williams. She, she get on. She get on her work email. No, sorry. She get on her work her job. Man. You want? I've got to change the name. You want to show your face so the baby can see you. She's snoring. She ain't gonna see nothing. All she do is sleep. Like she work a full time job. I don't understand. She does. It's tough being a baby. It's, I don't understand yeah. how yeah. she sleeps yeah. so yeah. tough. It's been a long time since you've been a baby. You forgot how hard work it is. People passing you from uh, hand to hand. Think about it. Think about it, Lexi. What if somebody were passing you around the room? I'm leaving that too. Huh? You talking like she got to do some yeah. walking around. Gotta, gotta, look at just look at her. But, look but her. what what if everybody was passing you around the room? How you how would that make you feel? feel that Comfortable. <laughs> but then but then she wake up to watch SpongeBob. Hey, right, come on. Yeah, she showed she watched SpongeBob last night with us. That's her mama's fault. <laughs> I know it. Like every other show, she turned her nose up at me. But SpongeBob, she just. Take it all in. <laughs> hey, you wake up enough to watch SpongeBob, but people be talking to you and you be knocked out. SpongeBob, right come on. He got your undivided attention. Now, to me, to me, Lexi, like, being a baby is hard because folks going to put clothes on you when they want to. <laughs> they going to put on you what they want to put on you. They going to force hats on your head. They going to put you in uncomfortable car seats. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's no tough. No it's, let me tell you something. Grown life is much easier. <laughs> you passing all around the room. Folks changing your diaper. I might I might want the diaper to stay on me. I might not want it changed right now. You know? No. <laughs> you stop it. You stop it. And, you stop it now. and then on top of that, folks put mittens on my hand like I'm a snowman. <laughs> Just, cause, myself. just because I scratched myself a couple of times. <laughs> well, I'm look like you want to. <laughs> hey, baby. Where, uh, Money, Macy, and Landon? Mm -hmm. Macy mm -hmm. left like two days ago. And oh. Jemani, Jemani walking around. And Landon gone back to go back to sleep. Money is low. Jemani just took one of his TVs. His TVs. Yeah, Mama's still mm -hmm. recording. Uh, oh, he took. Yeah. He just took one of his TVs to the 